In today's tutorial, let's do the Classy Steps Crochet Pillow together, and that's coming up next. And welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host, Mikey. Today we're going to do the Classy Steps Pillow, and I'm going to show you the stitch work involved in this pillow. It's actually really easy once you get beyond the repeat pattern and start to understand, and then you're going to fly through it. In order to do this pillow, you need to do two panels, the front and the back, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to tell you how to change the size if you wish. I'm also going to give you tips that if you don't want to change the yarn as far as cutting it, you can just carry it up on the outside instead of having to change all the yarn all the time. And when you go to fasten it together, you just tuck it in so it's on the inside of the pillow. So when you do the other edge that comes together, it can all be on the inside without having to stop or start your yarn all the time. So it's a really kind of a neat concept. So let's talk a little bit more about this pattern before we begin. So in today's pattern, I'm going to teach you how to change the size. Everything is in groups of four. So that means it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just always keep it in groups of four and you're going to be successful each and every time. So this pattern has been designed for an 18 inch pillow and that was to starting off with 48 and uh, 48 chains to begin. But maybe you have a 12 inch pillow. So you'll start with chain 32. 14 inch pillow, chain 36. 16 inch pillow, chain 42. The 18 as I mentioned is 48 and 20 inch, 20 inch pillows are 52 chains to begin. So if you can maintain that it's great. There's an information link in the more information of this video. You can click that and you can get that uh, information to be able to change the size if, if you wish. So this is a really quite an easy pattern to be able to follow. It is a one sided pattern so the other side is flat just like you see here. And so the other side has all the texture and these are just drop down front post double crochets that we are going to talk about as well. So let's uh, grab our yarn. We're going to be using Bernat Maker Home Deck today. You just need one ball of each color. So you, uh, you can do blue and more of, a, of a, a beige color like this or you can match what is exactly in in the pattern. Again that's your personal choice and it's your creativity. So let's get started. So in today's pattern you need to do two panels. So the back panel is not different at all. It's the same thing and all you want to do at the very end is once you get your square done, you're going to put them together so that the insides are on the inside and then you're just going to single crochet around the edge just like this and you're going to trace it and you're going to do three edges and then you're going to insert your pillow frame into the one edge and then just finish it off with single crochet with sealing the pillow in the inside. All of these strands here, you just want to tuck them away, make sure they're nice and out of the way and, and making sure that they are not going to fall out in the front of your pillow in any way. So it's just a really easy concept to be able to follow and I think it's uh, you're going to love this. You may even want to do this afghan as is as an afghan design as well. So let's uh, begin. Let's grab our 8 millimeter size L crochet hook today and our Bernat Maker yarn and let's try one of these. So the pillow has it of chaining 48 for the 18 inch pillow but remember what I said if you keep it in groups of four you're always going to be successful. So I'm just going to do a 12. Okay that's a group of four so there's three groups of four there to make 12 and I'm just going to show you the stitch work because once you get this it's so simple. So I'm just going to just go either one, two, three and four. Okay so that's a group of four and then I do it again one, two, three and four and then one two, three and four. So that's all you have to do. So you can follow the chains that I provided to you for changing the sizes or you can just keep it in groups of four. This makes, means that you can do an afghan like this if you wanted to. So let's uh, start our first row across and our first row across is just single crochet second chain from the hook. So just one and two, turn it over, get the back loop only and I want you to single crochet yourself to the end of the chain that you that you started with on the other side. So just working your way through. Getting started is always the hardest part and in most, in most projects it's always the most time consuming but this particular pattern once you get it going it's really quite fast to be able to manipulate it as well. And because I'm going to teach you how not to change your yarns by cutting them and just uh, carrying them up on the side you're just going to blaze through pretty quickly like I did when I did my mini samples. So just single crochet across your chain. I'll see you back here in a moment. Okay once I'm at the end of my chain I'm just going to turn it. So every other row is going to be what I'm about to show you. It's going to be just a double crochet. No fancy footwork, nothing. It's just double crochet. So you're going to chain up three which counts as one double crochet. So one, two and three and moving to the next stitch right beside there. And I want you to double crochet yourself all the way across. That's it. So every other row is going to just be this double crochet. That's as hard as it's going to get folks. And then I'm going to show you what to do at the end of this row. I'll see you there in just a moment. So once I get to the very last one I'm just going to double crochet and 
I am not gonna finish my stitch. I'm gonna hold. Hold it so you get two loops here. What I want you to do is that I don't want you trimming off your yarn. You don't have to. This is a neat concept about this particular project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my next color and I'm just gonna use this color and I'm gonna create a slip knot to begin. And what I want to do is use that color and pull through that final two loops and this will get this color ready then for you for the next row. What I want you to do, leave this blue out of the way out of, so it's not interfering with your stitches and I want you to turn your work and I want you to start with this clay color and that's what we're gonna do next. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna establish those lines that come down in your blanket and this is or in your pillow. This is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna single crochet into the first one. Now the first time you ever go by this straggler I would leave down on top and trap it underneath. So going into the very first stitch okay and just single crochet. And just going right up over top of that the straggler. So I want you to single crochet that one plus two more down the, down the row. Just like that. So now you have three single crochets right here in the beginning. So what we're gonna do now is just look straight down and just look straight down and look for the single crochet and you're gonna go into a side of the post. So you're just gonna wrap the hook first and looking straight down okay and I want you to get to the side post of the single crochet. So going in the side and back out pull through okay give it a bit of slack yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two just like that. So that counts as that next stitch that you see here in the blue. So you don't wanna go into that one to start the next section. So skipping that one going to the next one because this one is that one and I want you to single crochet the next three in a row. So one, two, and three. And then you're gonna drop down again. So you've got three in a row and then drop down. That's what you're gonna do the whole line across. So again wrap that hook, look straight down and if you look at these single crochets see this? So you got one there that you've already done. So one, two, three, go to the fourth and if you look straight down it was the fourth anyway. Once you get these established it's easy to maintain the rest of this. So just around, give it some slack, pull through two and two. And now that's it. You're just gonna keep doing that all the way down until you run out of stitches. So skip that same one in the back there and go to the next one and single crochet the final. So once you get to the other side there's only gonna be three in a row of single crochet and you are not gonna fasten off this color. You're just gonna leave it like that. You see that? It just went down. So there's three and then down, three and down and then just like that all the way. So let's start our next row. So our next row is an alternative row and it's like number two all over again. So you're just gonna chain two or sorry chain three and double crochet yourself all the way across. So the rows that have the single crochet are the ones that drop down and the other rows that are just double crochet that I'm doing now it's just a straight double crochet all the way across. And this will take you back to where the blue is sitting there waiting for you to grab next time that you go across. So the, how the color works is that you go across with the color and then back with that same color and then switch it to the next yarn. You can carry more than just these two yarns up on the side if you wanted to. Again that's your own creativity and you can decide what works for you. So you're just gonna double crochet yourself all the way across. I'm not bothering to count. I'm just going one double crochet in each stitch. Now when you get to the final stitch this is where you're gonna change. So you're gonna wrap and pull through two and normally you would pull through two but you're gonna drop it. Bring up this blue one again. Pull any slack if it was, it was pull any slack. Get this one out of your way so you don't see it anymore and just pull that through. And when you pull that through you don't want this to be so tight that it's gonna buckle but you don't want it being loose either that it's gonna be a warped. So you're gonna pull that and now you're gonna turn now. So this will begin then the next row. So the next row is just gonna be exactly what you already know. So you're gonna chain up one and the first three are going to be single crochets. So we've already done this when we started doing the, the, the clay color. So the first three are singles and then we're gonna drop down. Where are we gonna drop down? We're gonna drop down right into where this other section is right here. So you're just gonna wrap the hook, go behind that section okay and then wrap the hook and pull through. Give it a bit of slack, pull through two 
and two. So now the line is gonna follow straight up. So on here on the clay color here, you're going to skip the next one, go to the next one over and three in a row for single crochet. Okay, so three in a row, then drop down again. So wrap the hook, drop it and come back down to the section, pull through, give it a bit of slack, pull through two and two and go all the way down in the same fashion so you have lots going down. You skip that same one in behind and go to the next one and because you're on the end there's only gonna be three stitches left over which is your single crochet. Once you've done that you're just gonna turn your work. Keep on that because this one here is waiting for you on the other side so you know you can't finish over here. So you're gonna turn your work. This is an alternative row so this is chain three to begin and then just double crochet yourself back across. Now if you're changing the sizes of your particular pillow you just have to match your, your width to your height. So what I would do is if you're gonna change it in any way take a measuring tape measure across and then you stop when you get to that same height measurement in the vertical direction. That's how you would do it. So you're just gonna keep going back and forth with these two colors that gives a really neat look. The clay pillow is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's really quite nice and classy if you ask me. That's I guess why it's called classy. Um, it looks really quite elegant and without a lot of overkill to the pattern. So when you get done what I would strongly recommend uh, for you is that if you finish now you're gonna have a top section of your pillow not done. So what you wanna do is that you want to to finish off what you wanna do is change your color because you have to change it anyway in this row. Again it's gonna, gonna come up through the side and when you go to change off and finish off your panel you want to finish it off on the single crochet line and the reason for that is that you will you'll have this gap where you have no line at all and you see that you have a line right here in the bottom. So the first three are singles just like that and then drop down give a little bit of slack you're skipping that one that it's blocking in the front. Go to the next three. Single crochet. And then drop down. See just it's so easy. It's just one, two, three, drop, one, two, three, drop and then you do the final. So this would be the road that you would want to finish off on uh, if you're doing this pillow and therefore you have the lines going right up to the top and right down to the bottom just like this. So let's review on how to put these together. So let's review on how to finish this off. So I've just trimmed my yarn and I, I was just sitting here. I wanna use a darning needle and I wanna feed the yarn through a darning needle and I wanna kinda hide it in. Now this is uh, like a really tough yarn to work with. It's great um, for durability but you're gonna want a very sharp darning needle to hide in these loose ends. And so all you're just doing is just going in to the same color And this is what makes this yarn great is that it is a strong yarn. There's nothing worse than doing decor items and you realize then it's not gonna hold when you're done. So what you wanna do is that you don't have very many loose ends to work with. You have the, the beginning and the end and then just do this. Now because I had you bury this one as you went, the first one here does not have to be woven in. It's already done. So then you just have to do the final You'll have to do this on both panels. So the both final, this is the final loop. Let me just pull that through. And again using your darning needle then just put it on and just weave it in on both sides. And so therefore you should have no loose ends then hanging out of your panel piece. So please do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So using my two example pillows here I want to show you how to put these together. So we're just gonna single crochet ourselves down an edge and then around and then back up and then around again. So what this time though we have to sandwich two together. So all you just gotta do is put your uh, right sides facing down. Okay so then you see the, the wrong side. Then this one the right side is facing up. So if you're looking at the pillow and you're displaying it this is the side that you'd be looking at. So we don't wanna see the inside of your pillows. So all we're just gonna do because your uh, pillows are the same you want to start off and just go around. So just grabbing a piece of yarn that is the same material and that we want to start off and we're gonna use our same size hook and what we want to do is that we're gonna work through both thicknesses at the same time. So what I would do if I were you is that I would work in a top corner first. 
So going up. So go into this piece here and then go into the same piece on the other side and just the same stitch. Okay, so you're making sure that the right sides are facing out and we're just going to join with a slip stitch to begin like that. Chain up one and single crochet into the same one. So you're just gonna work yourself across. So you go into the next stitch on the front side, the next stitch on the same section in the back and single crochet across. So I'm just kind of monitoring what I'm doing on the other side so that I'm getting both at the same time. So what you wanna do is that any loose ends that you have just tuck inside the pillow. And the goal is, is to do this on three sides without the pillow form on the inside so that you can do this with the ease. Once you get that pillow frame involved or pillow form involved it can get a little complicated to be able to hold it. So why bother to put yourself through a lot of stress. So if you're matching the stitches across everything should work out equally on both sides. And we'll check that in just a moment. So you can use any colors that, that you wanted to for the border. I just happened to use white because it was closer to me on the desk. So a pillow form is the best way to uh, for these kind of pillows. Um, some people use polyfill stuffing and put it inside the pocket that is made. I would not recommend that. The pillow form has the polyfill confined already inside the package of the pillow form and it holds together a lot better if you were to ask me. So we're gonna go right to the edge and then the final one is the final one here and in the final ones that you want to do when you turn a corner you're always gonna put three. So one, two, and three. So when we started I had you only do one. That means that there's two more that are due here. So if you look at it now, see they're both joined now at the same spot. So to go down the side you just gotta take your time and just evenly space it because of the outside. So do not go into a major gap like this. Go into like a chain area when you go to put these together because they will be very obvious if you go into a major gap. It pulls the gap even worse than what it would be as if you didn't do it at all. So just going on the both sides again matching it all the way down. So just look carefully uh, be strategic on where your hook is going. Again see this is a gap space you don't want to go into that because it will open it right out. Just go into a chain and what that does is it just pulls that one strand over to seal it without ruining the look here on the edge. So what I want you to do is that I want you to go to all three sides uh, doing the same thing when you get to the base of this uh, particular one. So right here you're gonna put three single crochets as you turn. You'll have your stitches again and then you're just gonna finish up on this side. Now here on the other side here it's gonna be great and I'm gonna show you how to be able to hide in these loose ends. Okay these uh, strands that you carried when I get back over there. Okay three of my sides are now done just like so. I just happen to leave this side to the end. That's completely up to you which where you want it to start with. So you're gonna move down. So whenever you have these strands that are carrying up over top you wanna tuck them in so that they're gonna be buried on the inside of your pillow. So moving down you're gonna go to the next section here. Just make sure that you just tuck it underneath both of them. So just going in and just making sure that you go right up over them and just only into the other side. There we go, got it. So you wanna tuck them in on the inside so that they're not on the outside of your, your project here. So just moving down and anytime you've seen that just make sure that you're just positioning those so they get tucked in the inside of the pillow. So this is a great way to kinda cheat the idea. Um, here's another one here, this beige. So just tuck it in, get this other one here making sure it's in just making sure it's underneath just like that. So you're gonna move down the whole thing making sure those stay on the inside of the pillow so they don't emerge on the outside and therefore you don't have to trim any yarn and you can have a success story without a whole lot of hassle. So just take your time and just making sure everything is nice and tucked as you go. When you get back to the same corner that you started with remember that you gotta do two single crochets into the same corner and that will finish it off and then you're just gonna join it to the top of the beginning like this and then there you're done. So that's it for now. All I just need to do now is weave in the ends and I'm good to go. Don't forget that your pillow form should have been in by now. I didn't have one this size. I'm just doing a small swatch but make sure that you do put your pillow inside because this thing is good to go and you're now ready to use. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd. Have a great day. See ya.